Hi Church, welcome to today's devotion. My name's Darren, one of the pastors at Manchester campus of Audacious Church. Today we're going to be continuing our look at relationships and a relationship between a relationship between two incredible men, Joshua and Caleb. And um, in Numbers 13 verse 2, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Send men to explore Canaan, which I'm giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of their ancestors' tribes. It'd be really uh, useful and helpful at some point uh, for you to read Numbers 13, chapter 13 and 14, verse 1 to 12. So um, if you can now or afterwards just read numbers chapter 13 and then chapter 14 verses 1 to 12 gives you the full background um into this account in history and it's one of my fa- one of my favorite accounts in history a biblical story of huge importance and drama so let me set the scene for you the israelites have been in captivity for 400 years but through a series of miraculous events supernatural interventions and mind blowing moments they are set free and brought by God to the edge of their promise, a promise that was given to Abraham hundreds of years ago when he left his father's land and God sent him um, into this uh, into the promised land. Um, and all they have to do is just keep trusting God. The Israelites, all they have to do is keep trusting God, keep remembering what he has done, the, those miraculous moments, keep focused on where they are going um, and keep remembering, uh, rather sorry, from where they have come from slavery, because now they're in freedom. So here it is then, set set the scene in your mind. The nation of Israel, camped in the wilderness, gets ready to step foot into Canaan, its promise, the promise that God has given them. And Moses is told by God to um, send 12 men, one leader from each tribe, into the promised land to check it check it out Um, and they go in spending 40 days on reconnaissance checking out the land when they return they come with riches that so the nation is waiting for them and they they come back these 12 men come back and they come with riches huge amounts of succulent food grapes carried on a branch by two men. I remember when I was growing up, I had a children's Bible and they used to, the, the picture in it was these two big strong men carrying these huge grapes on a vine into before the Israelites. And uh, they say the land is rich and fertile and flows with milk and honey, but they also bring a butt as the cities. They say the cities are fortified and the people are giants. And they say we appeared as grasshoppers in their sight. They brought fear Uh, with their account making the people scared and so begins this relationship between Joshua and Caleb two of the spies Caleb stands up and quiets the crowd telling them that that yes they are giants but God is with us not them so we can surely take the land there's a confidence and authority a belief about this man the people continue to murmur so Joshua stands up and agrees with Caleb unfortunately the people don't side with these two mighty men instead go in with the ten and end up falling into a pit of fear and despair, which ultimately results in the nation of Israel wandering in the desert for 40 years and not entering the promised land like they should. They 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 listen to the 10 spies who bring the fear uh, account and they, if when you read the account, they, they threaten to stone Moses and the rest. But Joshua and Caleb are standing there saying, no, we can do this. God has given us this land. My focus here is the relationship between Joshua and Caleb. They were from different tribes and so may not have even known each other that well. The nation of Israel was estimated to be over one million people. They were both leaders in their tribe. So maybe they bumped into each other at leadership gatherings or inter-tribal events. But I, I, I don't know for sure but maybe they just they weren't they weren't best buddies they'd met and been brought together and had like occasional meets but had been spent 40 days together maybe they had conversation in there but when they came out they had a common interest 
in this moment, they pursued a relationship together with each other and not with the other 10. They were joined together in unity as they both had an absolute trust in God, a deep conviction in his power and authority, and were relentless in their pursuit of God's promises. This made them stand out and separate themselves from the voices of fear and discouragement. They pursued a relationship together. Caleb stood up, Joshua saw this, he backed him up. It was, we're not siding with these guys, we're siding together, we're pursuing this relationship, not this relationship. What can we learn from these two? What we can learn from these two, sorry, is that there are times when you have to separate yourself from relationships that aren't good for you and pursue right relationships. Where you have to stand for what you believe and what you know to be true. It's hard, but often necessary for your future. Both Caleb and Joshua walked in the wilderness with the rest for 40 years, but unlike the rest who died during that walk and so never entered the promised land, they actually did stay the course. In fact, Joshua led the Israelites into Canaan and conquered the land, taking what God had promised. And Caleb, at the age of 85, took the city that was fortified and occupied that by the giants he had seen all those years before. If he had pursued a relationship with the other spies, sided with them. Neither Joshua or Caleb would have entered the promised land. They pursued a right relationship and so therefore stepped into the future that was promised for them. My thoughts today are uh, three. Pursue relationships that cultivate an environment of faith and be a speaker of faith. Pers secondly, pursue relationships that speak life knowing there is life and death in the power of the tongue. So speak with words of positivity, life, truth, and affirmation. And thirdly, pursue relationships that help you dream bigger and see the possible in the impossible, helping you to step into and realise God's promises. It's about pursuing right relationships, relationships that cultivate an environment of faith, relationships that speak life and relationships that help you dream bigger. Love you, church. My thought for you today is pursue right relationships. Have a great rest of your day. And here is my prayer. Father, I pray that you will give us the confidence and the boldness to pursue right relationships, to relationships that cultivate environment of faith, relationships that speak life and relationships that help us dream bigger, that we would be a people, an individual, that I would be an individual that pursues right relationships. And also, side thought, that I would be a person that is a right relationship, that I would be a cultivator of a faith environment, that I would be a speaker of life and that I would be someone who helps people dream bigger, that you can be that person in the friendship, in the relationship also. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great rest of your day. Love you, church.